All right. Good morning, Jared Opfer. Beautiful Good morning, uh, April 24th, Friday, April 24th. Uh, how's your quarantine going, Jared? It's going, man. It's going, uh, as we were just talking about, you know, here with my girls, uh, you know, so it's a, it's a day at a time, just like everybody else, you know, it's, it's, it's going. How about yours? Um, you can see I got this, this guy behind me. Right. Ferdinand. It's, right? it's crazy at times, right? But it's, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. But um, right now. We've been, where are we going every day? Tell Jared where we're going every day. We do, what do we do every day? We go out and do what? Don't whisper. He said, hike. Hike. We hike. Yeah, Yeah, we hike every day. What are you guys trying to do every day? You got four girls. What are you guys doing? What are you girls doing? Not as crazy as uh, the summer of 2002 when uh, Mark Wentz moved into the Upper household, but uh, it can get that crazy sometimes. Uh, we go some hiking too. Not it's not your hiking, but um, the Castellia Quarry here. I don't know if you've ever been there. I'm one one. That's actually really cool. I used to uh, yeah. run there for 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 track. Yeah, it's 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 pretty cool for around here. You know, it's it's really nice. Sorry if I'm swatting. I got a fly fly in my office here, but I think yeah, you're gonna love. We've been doing. Um, you know, we got uh, a ranger with a girl, you know, girls, but uh, so we try to stay busy. Uh, they just we got a. Uh, just got pigs. They do 4-H county fair. So they just got hogs. So go down to the family farm. Uh, my wife, obviously, you know, the uppers aren't not farm farm people, but uh, my wife's family. So they, they go down, hang out with the pigs, all that fun stuff. So where do you do the pigs at? Are they who has the farm? Uh, Whose farm is it? It's on 101. My wife's family's uh, farm, right by uh, Erie Blacktop. Uh, you know, Laren Weichel, right? If yeah. You, uh, Obviously, it's straight across the street from him. They have a family farm, um, you know, barns and all that stuff. They have all kinds of, you know, fair animals and things with their cousins and things like that. So, don't Hermes have a barn over there? Who's that? Hermes. Yeah, they're on Route Four. Yeah, they're 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 farms on Route Four. So, you know, that's more in Sandusky, but uh, or it's just you know a little more uh, east. It's just a couple so, miles yeah, away, Hermes, isn't it? Big, big farm too. What's that? I'm sorry. It's, it's a couple miles away, isn't it? Right. Yeah, around the corner. Right, right around the corner. So, nice. Yep. They do. They do the the fair stuff too. Uh, Jason Hurst. Yeah. They, uh, Davies boys and Jasons and you know Jason's a big supporter actually the fair. So good. So a lot of fair stuff. A lot of 4-H stuff. And the other thing is like when you look at it, there's like they can get there's all types of different. Um, they got to be careful with. We're in the middle of a pandemic. A lot right, of animals, right. an animal, obviously, that started with a bat, right? Right, right. So you got to be so really yeah, careful. Yeah, because the animals oftentimes are carriers. Right, right. Um, yeah, so no, just the family in there, or, you know, you know, my father-in-law. and You know, you got to, like, you hear these stories, same thing. They you catch these illnesses that we can't catch or can catch. And it's, it's crazy, you know, I, I'm don't know anything about it but you hear these stories of how it how it works and you know the whole you know the state fair and all this and how it works and it's you know it's a there's a a plan behind it you know it's it's uh it kind of opens my eyes how that works you know how uh you know sometimes like how people are oblivious to how wrestling works you know it's like oh okay that's why you do it so there's some strategy of our you know get this type of animal and do this with them and things like that so there's like hand, foot, and mouth. There's swine disease, swine flu. There's hey, I don't know, yeah. I don't even know, man. Yeah, crazy... there's, there's... No, yeah, it's nuts, dude. Yeah, it's nuts. So, Jared, um, how long have you been working with OAC, Ohio Athletic Committee? How long have you been working with them? Uh, I think it was 2009. Uh, I came back to town here and started, started working with them. So, you know, a little over 10 years. Uh, been involved with them. Um, so it's, it's been a while <laughs> longer than I, than I thought, you know, now that I think about it. Okay. So when you look at it, um, the organization started in 99 or 98. Yeah. My senior year. Yeah. Uh, my senior year of high school, they, they started, they obviously like a year prior, they started planning for it, but yeah, it started in 99. So, you know, this would have been the 22nd year. Um, so it, it's crazy, you know, how it's changed over the years. 
And then it just started with a junior high championship, didn't it, Jared? Yeah, junior high. Uh, actually, you know, we've been going through the you know the years. Last couple of years, started in '99. It was a 16 man bracket the first year, and uh, you know one day tournament. And then it's funny you see the progression. You know, then it goes to a two day, and they add some weight classes. But yeah, it started with 16 weight classes in the junior high, and then um, you know the grade school started. I think five years later. You know, people are like, all right, there's you guys are doing this well. You guys should add something for the youth, and that's kind of when they. You know, started that, and that started with just, uh, you know, a handful of weights and ages. You know, they didn't do the 6U. You know, it was just 8U, 10U, and 12U. And, you know, you had the weight classes and the qualifiers. You know, it used to be whoever had the uh, biggest district got the extra guy. You know, kind of kind of like when we were in high school, right? Our district yeah, was bigger. Three. Right? You could, I, I took fifth in the district one year. Right, yeah. So it's – uh. So that's how it was. They started out that way. Now it's kind of you know spaced out and equal. But um, yeah, so dude, how crazy that uh, what, that Preston match, huh? That that was district, right? That was that was like the second round or the third round at the district of consolation. Jeez. And then dang, dude, he came back the you next stud, year. Dude. He was playing I, fast. You know, a, Preston was a stud. You were a stud. Yeah, but he he uh, he uh, he came back and won one seventy one. He beat Diddy in the finals the next year from Bellevue. Bellevue, right, right, right. So he was just – Josh Preston was a freak athlete, obviously. Right. And if you watch that match, nine stall calls in, uh, That's in wild. Four, minutes and, four minutes and 20 seconds. Jeez. And if you watch it, we're not really stalling. We're just trying to kill each other. Yeah, it's, it's wild. The official's how, uh, approval, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> It's it's wild. Um, it is. I came wild. across that this this year's district came across the bracket. Someone had some old district bracket from the eighties. It was pretty wild. Going back to I think your brother was in there and uh, you know just the names and how they organize things and it's pretty funny. Yeah. You know, going back looking at old stuff. So old school stuff is it, fun to look at. And you know I found those dual meets actually to open the uh, quick time video here to do the screen recording. I, I have a yeah. Jared Up video Jared Up for video in the dock. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, bring, I'm gonna bring that up on the screen real quick. People will be able to see it on the broadcast. It's it's two thousand it's two thousand two. Jared Upper. You know, I'm I'm playing it over the screen. Oh man. Oh man, look at that guy. You'll be able to see it on the live broadcast. This is who we're talking to right now. It's Jared. The, uh, I can't see it. I don't know what, I I know. Know what it is. It's the Universe American University. It's like you weighed in on the moon. You what? You weighed in on the moon. Hold on. Just wow. that, that guy was small, so it's not really fair to. That guy was really small. I remember. I, I, I remember his name. Yeah. Was you look like a so monster. It's really not apples to apples. He was really small. The guy was a peanut, huh? Yeah, like he was like Saban, you know, like Saban, really yeah, small. Yeah, a little guy, so like, 100, really like a guy who placed at 112 as a senior. Right, yeah, right. Like so that, that video is not really uh, Dude, you're massive you know, indicative video. of you're, you're, how, how, you're how big I was. I was big. Drew was big, too. Drew was big, too, my brother. Drew was pretty big. It might have been his, his big old head, but. But it, it, Drew was a 33 that year, and then Drew right. caught the 25 the rest of the you guys flip flop. We flip flop. My senior year, yeah, we, we switched. So, um, but you know, Jared, you wrestled D one. You wrestled D one. How many times did you qualified for NCAAs? Once or twice? Twice, twice. And sophomore, then, junior. Did you you won the MAC once and right. then wild sophomore, carded. yeah, and then up junior year and then wild right. carded. Okay, and then thirty three years a senior, right? Right. Okay. Uh, it's wild because. First thing, man, D1 wrestling's no joke. No, not a joke at all. Not a jo- you know, coming from St. Mary's, small school St. Mary's, and, you know, a lot of people don't know, I, uh, I took my recruiting trip with you. Like, you were a big factor when I went to Kent. You know, really big factor, you know, like the, you know, it's a big decision, but yeah, it, NCAA D1's no joke. So it was, uh, it was, uh, it was crazy times at Kent. Was it a different... Um, you know, like you and your brother were 57 and 0. You guys had like the national record for a while. You guys were 57 right. and 0. You're, you're senior in his sophomore year. 
Um, and then, you know, he, he really chased a lot more competition than you. And right. Was, yeah. It was kind of, I think, uh, they, you know, were figuring out, you know, I was the first kid through my dad was figuring things out. You know, you, you know, it is with four boys. You, you do one thing with your oldest and then you figure, okay, this is how we, you know, you change as a, a dad or a coach. And, uh, yeah, he, I mean, shoot, he wrestled, bumped up, wrestled Harry Lester his senior year. I think, uh, he went you know, to he, he went to, I right. don't know if he went to Ironman, but he, yeah, he won Medina. He won Medina his senior year and beat uh, Wooten in the finals. And then I think, uh, was it Jermaine Thompson? Ended up being D1. Or Wooten was D2 champ. Uh, Thompson was D1 champ. And they were all in his Medina weight. I think all like six state finalists were in that weight or something crazy. Something wild at Medina. Yeah. He was actually in, uh, in that crazy senior nationals weight. Oh, that's right. That Flo put out he took eighth there. He had yeah, him and Simmons had a barn burner match. I remember Joe Dubuque. You know, was I wasn't at the there, weight? but being on the phone. Was, What's that? Joe Dubuque at the weight too. Dubuque, Travis Lee, Simmons. Uh, shoot, who else? Uh, uh, kid from California. Vasquez, me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I gotta pause real quick. Let me take Ferdinand. Okay. I gotta get Ferdinand set okay. up real quick. Give me, give me twenty seconds. I gotta right. get this guy. All good, dude. Don't, don't, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I'm right here. All right, Ferdy was getting a little nuts there and a little restless there. That's all right. I get it, dude. I get it, man. How old are your daughters? What are the ages of all of them? Um, I have, yeah, seventh grader, fifth grader, and uh, twin kindergartners. Oh, my God. So it's, uh, it's uh, the perfect storm. And, uh, I'll have uh, uh, 18, 16, and uh, two 12-year-olds in a few years, which is uh, going to be nuts. But Hashtag girl know. dad. Yeah, I'm a girl dad, but I, uh, it's awesome. I love it, man. Okay. My wife's, my wife's awesome. So you make this adjustment from – did I remember watching videos of you, like, headlocking, pinning 10 guys in the first period? Right. Like, you just – you mauled everybody. Was it weird to go right, right. to the yes. next level and kind of just be a little bit – I mean, you were probably, like – 20 average, and 5. Average, right? Right. Yeah, it's a big adjustment. You know, you, uh, you go in from every day. You're trying to, you know, push yourself in a way in a, a small, you know, Division three room. And then you go to, you know, NCAA Division one, and you kind of figure it out. And, you know, you just kind of figure it out. It was a big adjustment. So it was, uh, you, know, li- you know, kind of live and learn and, things like that, but uh, it was a big adjustment. And like I was saying earlier, you know, Drew would see more competition, and then, you know, obviously Corey and Troy were on doing their own thing, but we are all kind of different. But, you know, um, it was a big adjustment, you know. Did you catch a lot so, of beatings? I can't remember because I was in the other end of the room. Beating? Oh, shoot. You know, Thompson and Boffman, man, coming in. You know, Boffman was tough. You know, Thompson was slick. You know, they, they uh, you know. Made me adjust real quick. You, guys <laughs> you, know, you, gotta, you have to adjust real quick, right? Yeah, you won the Mac at 125 like six years in a row. But yeah, yeah. Kent at, uh, did pretty well. Yeah, 125, I mean. They've had some really right. good guys. Um, Jared, when you look at it, um, you probably could have gone to the Big Ten. Are you glad you didn't go into the Big Ten or the Big 12 or ACC? Yeah, I'm, I was glad where I'm at, where I went, and you know, I think it. Uh, like I said earlier, you going there, you being there, I was real comfortable with that. Um, 
yeah, I wouldn't change, change a minute of it, you know, um, you know, some good friends, good times, good experience, you know, um, you know, I was looking at a few other places, but not, it, that seemed like the right fit for me. I don't have any regrets going there or anything. And, um, you know, I got lifelong friends from there. I, 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 I wouldn't change a thing. So I liked it. I liked it there. Everybody's so uh, hyper focused on their kid being D one. Um, your right. your youth organization. I mean, dude, you've had you've had Jay Jaggers win the title there. You've had the Stevers win. You've had Chris Phillips win. My nephew Ian won there. Right. I mean, right. Nathan Tomasello never won your tournament. Ben right. Darmstadt never won your tournament. I mean, the Palmers, right? I mean, we, I, I can just keep going. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, they won your tournament. It just, it's just it's the who's who along Ohio wrestling. Who's won your tournament? And, you know, uh, D'Amelio and the Crace kid had a great rivalry wow, at your tournament. Right. You know. Decatur's um, in there, too. Yeah, the Decatur's. Um, Jeez, and then you know, I look look now. I, I like watching uh, Timmy Mazer versus Gray Burnett are some of my favorite matches to watch. Them at the districts and then at the in the state finals, those guys are amazing. Um, Logan Hours, that's another guy who won a bunch. Oh, yeah. in high school now. Uh, it, it dude, it just the list goes on and on. Alex Marinelli, you know. Yeah. So so Jerry, we came across some of his videos here recently yeah and i love going. that and yeah. I'm, obviously i'm a big part of the media end of ohio athletic committee and oec right. um if it's gone through oec it's basically gone through me since 2008 right right we knew you from the get uh, obviously like i said shoot before college right we knew each other from junior high and middle school uh, track back, Jared, uh, middle school track buddy right you we were like lapping everybody in a in the mile Pretty much right. You were in a relay. I remember maybe running against yeah, a relay. I wasn't very good in track. I was just kind of there. Actually, my dad put me in track. He's like, "You got to learn how to run." That's why I did track. So, so was- in OAC, you've had the who's who, right? And and right. literally, when I say Palmer, we know that mm-hmm. you know Wayne the Pain or Dwayne Palmer, probably one of the highest level, next level crazy dads, right? But he's got a- it, it kind of worked out <laughs> for. You know, Lance Palmer's making right. – he's won $2 million tournaments. Right. Uh, he's a good guy. I like him. I, I've let that guy coach my kids. Colin Palmer, I've let him coach my kids. They know they know wrestling. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, you talk about that a lot. And you always talk about parents and the D1 fixation. And, the and, mm-hmm. and hey, understand, be kind to officials and, and be a good person. Teach your kids the lessons of sport. I think that right. that's the big thing, and you guys give a lot of scholarships, and you bring a lot of people back, and you had a guy die at a tournament two years ago, it. and then yeah. all the first responders, Guy Seiko and Mike Matt were two of them, right. saved the guy's life. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. you guys are, a, are an organization about the right things. Um, you're about, like, getting kids lots of competition. Um, how do you keep that balance between – the really super ultra competitive parents that you have. You have Moran, Moran's been at the tournaments. Um, right. You know, Carson, and he, he, you know, he, he's, he's, uh, come around too. you know, he used to be really intense at these and he's kind of, you know, changed, you know, we all changed, but, um, yeah. And, and yeah. You know, it, so you're asking how to balance that, the, the, you know, the, the parents that are, how do you, you balance know, all the, the ultra competitive parents who think, Oh, my kid's getting a D1 scholarship, which you and I know how rare those are. It's going to get more rare now. Oh, more rare, yeah. We yeah. can talk about that in a minute, how rare that's going to be. But, yeah, we balance that. You know, we um, you know, we put the rules in place. And, actually, it's uh, it's come a long way from, you know, we, you know, we talked at the start of 99, but it's come a long way from for parents, too. And, um, you know, parents are learning, too. You know, it's not just the wrestler. You know, you want to believe the difference, you know, I'm sure you see, you know, like you said you've been there for years, but just from the junior high weekend to the grade school or, um, you know, a junior high district to the grade school district, the difference, you know, by junior high, most parents kind of figure it out how to, how to deal with, you know, their anxiety, right. And their anticipation, um, from the grade school and grade school, they're still figuring out, you know, I think Rob Gore mentioned, you know, he, he dealt with it by videoing and that's why he's still videoing. He, that's how he, 
you know, handled watching his kid wrestle because, you know, he had to get the anxiety and things like that. I don't want to speak for him, but, you know, something along those lines. But, um, you know, from our end, we just got to remind the parents, you know, it's it's ex- exhibition at the at the youth level. Even, you know, some, some people say junior high, obviously, keep score. You want to know, you know, what do you need to work on? But, uh, um, you know, we don't even keep track of multiple time grade school titles. You know, people, hey, I was, a, you know, X time, you know, I was a five time grade school champ. Where's that rank me or whatever? It's like, we don't even keep track of grade school. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's all exhibition for, for the next level. And, you know, you see those phenoms that are real good when they're little and sometimes they pan out, you know, like the Palmers and other times they don't. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a long road, long journey. And, um, you know, that's getting back to the thing with, you know, Kent state that I was pretty fortunate with my dad, you know, you know, when making those decisions of, you know, college and, you know, life, he was pretty, pretty supportive and he, he played dad. He didn't play coach. And that's what some of these kids need. And sometimes dads can't play coach and dad, and they don't figure that out until junior high or it's too late when the kid quit. So you gotta, you know, as a parent kind of self-reflect, you know, do I want to be coached? Do I want to be dad? Do I want to be dad coach? Some guys can do it. You know, some guys can do it well where other guys, you know, they got to figure it out. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to be dad. You know, my dad figured that out. Um, you know, I'm going to be dad and that, that's the best thing that's ha- that helped us, you know, on and off the mat. So it, it's just, you know, parents got to figure it out for themselves. You know, we try to put rules in place at the OAC, you know, you know, you know, we know that it's hard to retain officials as it is. So it's, you know, here, here's the rules that we want to keep it a, a, a civil match and, you know, look at the big picture, you know, um, but it, it's, it's not always easy, right? We kind of, you know, when your kid's out there, I mean, you're going to see it in a few years. It's, it's a different, it's a different, uh, a different beast you got to conquer. You know, I remember watching my little brothers and, you know, having that anxiety and stress level that I did had beyond when I wrestled, just it, it's out of your control. So you just got to learn how, how to deal with it. So, you know, Ed Opper, huh? Julie Opper, your parents, two of the best people I know. I'm really glad that, um, I got in with you guys 25, 30 years ago, just like as, as – You're one of my mom's favorites. You know that, right? She yeah, was at, just she like does it. great people, man, just really good people, hardworking, blue-collar people. Um, you know, you guys all lived in this attic of the right. – You lived in an attic of the store now. It's the store. Right. It's the storefront yeah. for Sandusky. What, what did you – is it Sandusky Home and Blinds? Have you rebranded again? Uh, so um, – you know, my dad, yeah, he's, he's, you know, didn't, wasn't college educated, you know, went, he was actually went to a, a Toledo for a, a quarter or semester, whatever it was back then for engineering. He's a, he's a pretty smart guy, you know, self-taught, you know, but uh, he came back, uh, started installing floors for this guy, uh, it was Sandusky Home Interiors. And then during the, um, you know, they did all kinds of stuff, uh, uh, wallpaper, furniture, flooring, blinds, yada, 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 and, you know, business evolved. My dad eventually bought him out, moved the business from downtown Sandusky out to Cleveland Road, right by Cedar Point, right? It built the business, built our residence above t- on top, but now it's uh, S&H Blinds and Floors, uh, you know, you know, late 2000, you know, that when the last, uh, you know, 2008, 2009 hit, they kind of rebranded, um, you know, Sandusky Home Interiors, you know, they'd get calls, you know, what, what are you, what are you? And they rebranded to s and Blinds and Floors. And uh, now they do a lot of window blinds and flooring commercial. Actually, I was just talking to somebody about this. They just, they're doing um, guys' blinds at uh, his new place. Oh, are they? Um, yeah, they do. It's crazy not to get off subject. But, yeah, so my dad's, uh, you know, you know, they did uh, they did Clay City Schools. That's up by you. They did like, back in 2010. My mom and they dad are Clay whole- grads. Right. They did the whole, so they do, you know, commercial, they did Jeff Leonard's house. They do, uh, they can ship, they ship down to Tanner Sheard. He had someone else's off. But anyways, yeah, we grew up above the shop, the business. My dad was a pretty smart guy, you know, um, with that. And, uh, you know, he's still, still getting after it, but, uh, you know, smart guy, you know, I, I was really fortunate, you know, have him as a dad, my mom, even, you know, she was actually a pretty athletic one and feisty one. So it was a, it was a good mix. So your mom is actually a Roth. Right, right, right. And then your uncle Jude was your high school coach, and Jude was one of the guys who co-started OEC with your dad, right? Is that Am I getting right. that correct? Right, yep. Jude, my dad, and uh, Mark Heemstra. Even prim- you know, there's a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of other guys, but those are kind of the, the three main guys. They, uh, 
you know, they started it, you know, they were running a million tournaments a year and they, they were pretty efficient and they knew whose job and role was what, and that, you know, it takes a lot of different people to make that work. So, you know, they had the, the, you know, strategy of how to make that work, but yep. So my mom, um, was a raw, you know, you know, bunch of brothers, uh, her one brother, um, Brad, he wrestled actually at Mount union. Um, and, uh, so it's, uh, you know, she was pretty athletic. I guess she was really good in softball, basketball. I guess everyone tells me, you know, she, it's funny. My dad always reminds us that's where we got our athletic ability from. Not that we have a ton, but you know, he won't take any credit. So what, what's wild about that is your uncle, uh, Jude, who is your guys' coach, you mm-hmm. you were never on a championship team. Your brothers all were. Right. We uh, took second, second, third, second, and we won a state duels, but that's not the same. You know, it's not – I mean, it's cool, but it wasn't the same back then. But, yeah, but yeah second, really second third, second. The year we took third was actually closest to taking first. But um, That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but and then Drew's team won – um, yeah, then they reeled off. Yeah, I think Corey and Troy were on a champion team every year. Drew was on three, maybe. That's or, crazy. No, he couldn't. He, he was just on the one. You built the foundation for that, though. Like, honestly, like, yeah. I mean, not even being like a jerk, but you really were the foundation of it. I mean, my dad did, you know. My dad built and it. And your uncle. Not, not my dad, but, you know, I mean, you know, Jude, Mark, my dad, you know, with, with the, the four brothers, you know, kind of, the, the, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of family. The Whalen family, they had. You know, some studs in there. Hey, you Connor know, Whalen. Connor Whalen kicked the tar out of me one year. I was a freshman. He kicked the tar out of me. And then that same year, he pinned Tate in the SBC finals. <laughs> when he, I remember. <laughs> Him and Chad Long used to collect Miller scalps. <laughs> uh, no, Tate was up, what, 13? 14, 14 points. 14. He was tech falling yeah. him. I was there at Fort Clinton. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Tate, man. How how to. Uh, I'm wired and up so normal. He's a mutant too, though. Compared to compared to Tate, well, good old Tate. He's mild mannered. He's a nice kid. Um, he's a super nice kid. Yeah, I was talking to Joe Williamson about him last night, and I was like, Joe, because I was going to bring Joe in for the Ohio State tournament this year to help me do the coverage. Right. And he was like, Oh, I was just so excited to work with you. And all I could think, and I even said it to him, I'm like. Well, dude, I was going to be watching most of the time. I was going to be up right. in the stand. Well, at least for Division Three, I'd have been up in the stands in the beginning of Division Two, probably. Right. Which, which really takes yeah. away from. And then he was like, "You haven't watched the tournament in forever." Well, that's not true because I was at the district tournament in Napoleon, and I. And I he watched, didn't get a match, right? He yeah, didn't get I watched. A that's the most I've watched a tournament without a camera. Uh, Good for you. You deserve years, it, though. You deserve it. Years. And then, you know what, I still did some interviews with some of the champs afterwards. I saw you in the corner down there, right? Yeah, I talked to Coach Herms. You know, guys. Yeah, and it's it's just – and you're it's crazy because you're a head coach, too. You're a head high school coach, too. Right. Well, I, we got a good group of guys helping out. You know, my brother Corey and Rick Bell, me and Chad Rosie. So we got a guys that help. So they take – you know, when I'm busy with the OAC stuff or family stuff, you know, they, they pick a lot of that up. So it's – you know, it's you know you gotta have a, a group of guys. So, so Jared, you guys evolved from the Saint, Sandusky Saint Mary's uh, Central Catholic High School program in Northwest Ohio. You guys evolved out of that, right? You evolved out of the Paw Panther Athletic. Right. Yeah, they, they started wrestling. the Paw. The same group of guys started Paw in the mid '80s, and that was the only club in the area. I mean, I forget how many you know hundreds of kids they had or involved in that but there was no youth program in the area you know kind of like probably west shore was the you know the cleveland area it was the only program so a lot of guys came to the paul program and you know competed through that and you know there was you know the perkins kids or sandusky kids or the margaretta kids um so that started mid 80s and then that when that came you know those kids started coming up through you know 92 through 2007 those paul kids you know, that's where they paid, you know, paid dividends at the high school. It's some crazy stats. So from like 92 to 2007, they were top nine in the state every year and like top five every year, but three or something. I don't know, something crazy. But they have, that's all from the Paw, you know, that same group of guys that started the Paw program. And, you know, so that's what OAC spun out of Paw, essentially. So that's on St. Mary's Central Catholic right. and Paw, which were, you know, they were – one was the the youth feeder to the high school, right? Right. So it was the you know the local club, like any school could go to it, you know. But um, 
you know, they were running tournaments. I think my junior year, they ran like eight tournaments or something. You know, they ran the SBC or it'll be my freshman. Anyway, when it, they ran SBC our Panther classic, right. O'Carver used to come to that, uh, D3 duels, our dual meet tournament. They ran a sectional, they ran a bitty tournament. So they run all these tournaments and they kind of, you know, we're going to, you know, these national tournaments or regional tournaments. And they were like, you know, we can put something together. And you know, that's where the, the junior high state idea came from when they were traveling these tournaments and they figured, Oh, we can, we can run something, a quality tournament. And, you know, they seen the void where, you know, you went from a conference, right? Where did you go? I mean, after you wrestled SBC in junior high, where'd you guys, would you do freestyle or what would you yeah, go to? Yeah. I mean, I went right into track and split it with freestyle. I played baseball too. Right. So, did you? Drew yeah, was a big baseball, baseball guy. I, I played one a little bit. I remember I would go from track practice, George Bergman would have wrestling workouts, and mm-hmm. then I would go out to baseball practice with uh, uh, Tim Harbaugh had a team one year that I played on. Yeah. Jeff Harbaugh, the head oh, coach, okay. or the, the principal. Oh. Person. Jeff. I mean Jeff. Yeah, I mean Jeff. I'm sorry, yeah. Jeff. Yeah. His dad yeah. had a team, yeah. and I played on that team for one or two That's summers, different. and I, I balanced all that, and it was just like total madness, man. Just Just like – Life was right. just, yeah, I mean, but you know what? You got so what much our energy. Did, right? What's that? Like what our parents did. You know, I remember running track at uh, Margareta Relays or something, then getting in the car and driving to TOC that night and getting weighed in or something. You know, it, it's well, wild, you know. Like you said this. You've told me this before. Parents will do anything for their kids. They don't skimp on their kids. They'll always do whatever it takes. You guys have posted the – you post like a like a meme – that you guys post and it's like I never understood my dad wore the same three outfits for like right ever right. and I never he wore the same shoes the same outfits but it was it was so that their kids could have opportunities and they could afford to take them wherever they wanted to take them and that that's right, what being a right. parent's all about man I, I yeah right. I, you're right I know that that's why we do what we do, right? We kind of learn these lessons and then we're trying to pass it on, you know. Well, it, what bothers me is like. When people are like, well, no, they're just creating more tournaments for a money grab. And I'm like, no, they're creating more opportunity. And that's that's pretty annoying to me because if it was just a money grab, dude, if it was just about money to me, I wouldn't do it. Right. If that's, what, yeah, that's-, if that's what has to get you up in the morning. You suck. And you, you're in the wrong sport, I'll tell you that much. Right. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, people think, you know – Usually, like I said, grade school parents, you know, junior high guys kind of figure it out. Parents kind of figure it out. But, yeah, with the, you know, OAC stuff, I mean, since the beginning, I want to say the beginning, it was like 28 bucks to get into the district. You know, up until last year, it was 35 So from, you know, 99 to 2019, you know, the entry fee only went up 7 bucks. And people don't realize 80% of that money goes back to the host. You know, like O'Carbro had a sectional this year. They, they're getting – you know, eighty percent of that money. People think it's coming into the OAC. It's like it's going back into a carbor program, or you're you a know. nonprofit. What's that? You said you're a nonprofit. Right, right. Like, come on, but come right. on, man. We're, like we're, we're the same people that think St. Paris Graham's a, a a private school, though. You know. Well, yeah, and the other thing is, what's crazy about it is, if you're a nonprofit, all your books are public, aren't they, Jared? Mm-hmm. Right, right. People can so. see what you're doing with your money. If they're if they're that right. worried. Th- go right. do that. Would you? Would right. You, right. Am I wrong? Right. Or right. come That's on, man. What I'm just, to well, but it's annoying because I always got to defend it to people, and I'm like, you know what? This is America. You have choices. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Go go to an inferior product, or, or right. hey, you know what? Go national. Go to Reno. Mm-hmm. Go to Tulsa and get literally the same level of competition that you're going to get in Youngstown or at a lot of these districts. Right. And now the sectionals. Hey, how about some yeah. of the sectionals? Some of the right, sectionals were the bananas. Classes. Right. There were some of those weights were, but yeah. So yeah, that's another thing. Those, that was the first year for that. It was, um, actually, you know, some of the weights were light, you know, obviously you're going to have that, but they averaged more kids than the first three year of districts. So the first three year they had, we had grade school districts, um, was a lower number I think they're like 201, 203, 205 or something. This year, the sectionals average, I think, 215 or 220. Now, then this is the first year for it. You know, people are so, so you know, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, and that's the thing. If we wanted, to, if it was a money grab, we just increased the, 
the district price, you know, people are going to go to it. I and mean, we want to add the sectionals where you got to pay for awards and staffing. And creating more opportunity. Away. There's more opportunities for kids to wrestle. Right. I don't right. know what else to say to people. I'm just like, did your kid yeah, get an opportunity to wrestle? Yeah, try to keep it between season. You know what I mean? You know. Yeah, but it's, just, it's, it's irritating to me because, right. Jared, right. if I didn't believe in your organization, I wouldn't drive through the night from the NCAAs in St. Louis – so I can make it to your tournament. I wouldn't. I wouldn't or do that. Five, so. cab and, yeah. Well, people end up realizing once, like I said, junior high or once they get to high school, it's just a matter of time. Usually, you know, it's, it's the youth parents the first time through, just like anything. You know what I mean? First yeah, time but, through on something. But that's a battle you got to fight, and you know. And there's a lot of people who are super tough on the internet, and then when yeah. you, when you're talking to them face to face, they're not super tough anymore. That that's kind of annoying to me. But well, hey, that's our society anyway, right? Right, and it's going to be new new parents each year, and we hope there's new parents each year, right? Well, yeah. We hope there's new the, people coming in. And those as far as new parents did. from outside of wrestling, right? Yeah, we got to keep them. We got to keep. We got to keep bringing more people in and creating interest, and that's that's right. why. And my thing is, I'm not like super creative. Like you watch my stuff, it's just like a video. I don't please, edit please, a bunch. Here, I don't edit tonight. a bunch, right? What? But, but when you're relentless and you put a lot of content out there, and it's good content. People are going to watch. Right. No, they appreciate it. Yeah. So, so on that subject, we're talking about, you know, you got to like it. What, what's, uh, I've always wanted to ask you this. What, what's your first wrestling memory? What do you, what, when was like, actually you, you were kind of like my youngest brother, Troy. They were always around wrestling, right? Growing up. But like, when do you like, Oh, this is wrestling. I remember going to Genoa and Oak Harbor. And I remember, well, Ferd, my brother Ferd was a state qualifier for Genoa in 1980. Five, so he qualified okay. for for Genoa in '85, and then um, so I remember Ferd, and I, I remember going to to Genoa Junior High. It's actually in Genoa Junior High is actually in Genoa. Well, okay, the old Genoa Junior High is in Genoa on 163, and it's actually kind of like right down the road. It's actually like some like it's a charter school now. They oh, sold really? the building, yeah. yeah. I don't even know if it's there anymore because I don't even. You know, I think I did a camp there. Way yes. Long, like when the yes. tanks were little. When Scotty Felipe was when, real little. Do you uh, remember I had Scotty with me and we were like fighting? Yeah, I, I had remember Scotty doing that, that camp. with me. Yeah, wow. That's the school then, That's huh? That's the school. I, I, oh, yeah. That's right. the school. The they, have, they have a stage. And right. I remember going watching Ferd and Chad's dual meets there. Wow. And the, the coach was this guy named Russ Bodai. What's crazy is um, Bird and Chad went to middle school. They went to G- that that school. They both went to Genoa Middle School. Yeah, and the other and it was like the head coach was like the head coach of the high school was just kind of like a good old dude, and you know he wanted everybody to be everybody's buddy. Mm-hmm. And Joe Bergman didn't want to be everybody's buddy, and he wanted to hold my brother accountable, and he was like. Kind of a mean jerk to my brother, but he understood my brother was a, you know, he was a killer. Bird, Bird right. was a killer. Everybody's yeah, kind of a different angle with everybody, yeah, right? He was, just, he was mean, but they're like the Bergmans. I mean, obviously, you can see what Bob's done at Genoa. You can see right. what George has done at Oak Harbor. Joe, sure, which, yeah. Joe which is Bob's yeah. dad, the head coach right. at Genoa. Right. Joe was Ferd and Chad's head coach, and then he was Tate and Mai's junior head coach. Okay. And then him and George flip-flopped, and there was some stuff mm-hmm. that happened. And anyhow, long story short, is I remember going there. Ferd and Chad had a team. It had to, if they could have stayed at Genoa, and the head coach would have been worth anything. Um, I forget the guy's name. He just passed away. No. I can't think of his name. And he was like, I guess a real nice guy and like a, everybody's buddy, but he, you know, he just wasn't interested in holding the guys accountable. Mm-hmm. Dude, they would have won Division Two or di- whatever division they would have st- been in. Right. They would have won. They had Bird. They had Nick Sanciola. A, they had Chad. A. They had a dude that went to Otsego that left. John Meeker. They had my, my insurance agent, Dane Donaldson. Dane? I know Dane Donaldson. Yeah, State Farm. They, dude, they had all five of these guys. They had a couple other. They had Dane Eppling. Wow. They, dude, they would have won, like, in 87, 88, 89, they would have won at least one title. And they're all in the same middle school. All in the same middle school. Wow, um, and then all these guys moved. Dave went to Wapa, or Dane Donaldson went to Wapakoneta. John Meeker went to uh, 
Atsego, Atsego. Ferd and Chad went to uh, O'Carver. Dude, they also had the, you know who else was in their, was in their middle school? Brian no. Spolinski. Uh, played in the NHL for like really? 10 plus See, years. I, you know names. I don't know names like you, Dude, man. Brian like, Spolinski, play, he played for Michigan State. He was first team All-American. Um, and then he was. Obviously, like, he's done well. He's obviously an athlete, right? Brian Spolinski, they called him Smoke because he could throw the ball. He ran. Dude, I remember going to the track meets. He was on my sister's track and field team. He crushed everybody. Well, it's like what you would think of a guy who's like a Hall of Famer type athlete. Right, right. That was what he was. Right. He went to their middle school. So they would have like, you know, for sure. Like They would have won. For sure. Won Genoa would have won wrestling, probably football, mm-hmm. and something else had my brothers. Like Clyde the, in the 90s, right? The core like Clyde in the, the, team the 80s, right? But – some things happened. Some real weird stuff happened with my brothers. And my dad donated a bunch of time and energy to helping them build a wrestling room and a bunch of other stuff. And so we left and we went to Oak Harbor. We moved directly across the street, Jared. We moved. I remember moving and I remember walking next to the truck, holding stuff onto the truck. We moved from. Yeah, we literally moved the length of my driveway here. You've been to my house. I got a long driveway. We moved that far. <laughs> It would be like if there were a structure at the end of my driveway and we moved our stuff to it. Yeah, John, you grab that, right? Like yeah, it was crazy. Street. Like we were walking stuff over and it's not like you got like a box truck that's or anything. So loud. Yeah, you used like old farm. We had an old blue farm truck and that's how we moved most of our stuff. And then it worked out well, obviously. Ferd was a, Ferd was a state champ the next year. And then um, two time state champ. Chad was a state champ. Tate was a state champ. I was fifth, and Ian, Ian went there, right. um, and okay. now obviously Wyatt, and it, it's it's been a good fit, but you know, like Genoa, Genoa's done a great job. Right. Genoa did, Bob Bergman and Genoa did what what Russ Bodai and, God, I can't remember the guy's name, who the head coach was. He literally just passed away, though, but not a bad guy. Just a guy right. that was kind of like, eh, hey, whatever. Going to back to that, that spot, right. Yeah, he wasn't like a type A guy that wanted to keep him, you know what I mean? Like, right. they could have done it in the 80s, what they did. It wouldn't have been at the level they did it last year. What Genoa did last year was six that's, champs. That's crazy. Yeah, but they would have had two or three, maybe four champs. Right. Which was unheard yeah. of then, obviously. Right. So, you know, that that was, that's, there you go. You got me off on a tangent. I remember the Genoa people. I remember my that's brother's. Cool. And going to Genoa Junior High, where we did that camp. And that's your first wrestling memory. No, that's I remember that. Like, um, how how old were you? Three or four. Wow. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, three or four. Third would have been in. Yeah, it would have been eighty-seven, yeah, eighty-three, eighty-three, eighty-four. Wow. Yeah, so would have been yeah three, four, four, three, four, five years old. And then I remember a big duel with Stritch. At Stritch. Oh, they were top back there, right? Yeah, they were really good. And and so the Bergmans were all Stritch guys. Except right, for the right. older couple. The older, like, Hank went to, like, St. Francis. And I, mean, I think Hank went to, like, Vietnam, dude. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, but, right. like, as far as George, Jim, Joe, those guys all went to... Uh, stretch. They all went to Stritch, yeah. The bird, right? Didn't all the Durs go to Stritch? All or? the Durs went to Stritch. And, dude, Stritch had... Stritch was, like... They were the standard, and actually, what happened was Joe Bergman left Stritch because he figured out you guys don't have a great retirement system, and he got into the STRS and he went to a public school, which is like Mark Marinelli left Columbus to Sales. Right, right. right. If you were a teacher, you'd probably be in a public school, not at St. Mary's. It's, right. This is how it goes. Right. Um, it's it's um, so yeah. Joe Joe Bergman left uh, Stritch. And he was at Oak Harbor, and then, gee, they were lights out early on. He had, like, he had a four-time finalist in uh, Greg Goad. You know what I mean? And then, Yeah, like, he was tough. Just, they had guys, man. And, and they were top five in the state every year. And, but those are my early memories. I remember I remember, really, I remember Stretch. And I remember, Sorry, I got a little one here. No, bring her up. Which one we got here? Oh, here. See, wine. And here's the wine and starts. Here. Hey, in. just so you know, if you've got to go away, I'm going to put the match on. I'm going to put the match on the screen. 
Like if we break again, I'm just going to put the oh, match okay. on the screen. No, I'm good. So she, if you uh, gotta leave, don't worry. We're just gonna watch that old school match. That's what people are gonna watch in the meantime. No, nah, we're good. We're good. They just get competitive. They uh they're definitely like their grandma Julie. It's funny. They're Do competitive. They fight a lot? What's that? Do they fight a lot? Oh, uh, they get a lot for twins. I I I'd, I'd, I'd fight a lot more if I was them. I'll tell you that shoot me and Drew. I guess boys are different, but they they get along. I can't complain, they get along, but they if there's something to be competitive about, you know, uh, they definitely get competitive. So, so you asked me my earliest memory of wrestling. Mm-hmm. What's yours? Uh, you know, like vague memories. I remember going to the SBC tournament. Um, you know, I don't remember what. I think Clyde Gym. I remember. I, I think it was Clyde's gym. Um, you know, real vague SBC tournaments. Going there, obviously. Um, you know, bitty practices and things like that. Um, but like first wrestling memory really got me like, Oh, this is sweet. This is awesome. I was going in 92. So I was, you know, a little bit older than, but going to the state tournament, first time going to the Nutter center, first time. And, um, when Capizzi and Rosine were in the state finals. So, um, that was kind of like, you know, the moment like, Oh, this is sweet, you know? So, but yeah, I remember, you know, the SBC tournaments, I mean, some of those SBC tournaments were crazy back in the, yeah. some of those weight classes. Well, um, it, another thing, Jared, with my first memories, they took me to the World Cup. Oh, when it was in Toledo? Yeah. I used to go to the World Cup as like a little, little kid. Yeah. And I remember, and I've actually talked to John Smith about this. I remember really? he lost. He was either like, who did he lose to? I can't even think who he lost to. And it was just an exhibition, I want to say. But he wasn't mm-hmm. ready. And him and his brother, Leroy, are screaming at each other. And as they're arguing... He's signing our autographs. And then I gave him an, Ohio, an OSU and Ohio State hat. And he's like, wrong OSU. And he signed it. He signed the bill <laughs> of the hat. And he was like. Did he write wrong OSU was, on it? was cool. He was super mad mm-hmm. about losing. He's obviously one of the most supreme competitors in right. anything ever. Right. But he signed my Ohio State Buckeye OSU hat. And he's like, wrong OSU. <laughs> and I remember he lost. Dude, listen, I saw Mark Schultz lose, John Smith lose, I want to say Dave Schultz lose. I saw all these guys lose. It wasn't always, it wasn't the same World Cup that they all lost at, though. Okay, but you, I mean. Over the years, the like five years they took me to it, dude, it was in Savage Hall. It was perfect. Wow. And it was like, I remember the Cubans would come, the Russians, the Soviets would come. And people would like give them jeans. Apparently, they didn't have jeans in Russia, or it was like, oh, really? No, yeah, jeans were like gold, dude. All the way up until us going to Russian nationals, um, Levi's, and then and then they they kind of evolved to like Tommy Hilfiger jeans. That's funny. Denim, Jared. Denim, Denim. is gold in Russia. If you didn't know, I did not know. Now I know. You didn't know that? No. Real no, thing, like denim. I remember that was the big thing. When a lot of those like Eastern Bloc and the Soviets would come, huh. jeans. If you, dude, you could go and get jeans. Whatever they had, they'd give it to you. The jeans what didn't even have to fit. Oh, jeez. It's crazy, right? Like, I remember that. The jeans was like a huge part of it. Hmm. And like Joe, Joe Flo, Joe Grow, as I like to call him now, Joe Williamson, right. he brought it up. I started like, oh, that last night. I started watching. I haven't finished it. I kept long, getting yeah. around. Um, I kept getting but like if you think about it, like I remember he was like, Oh, Tommy jeans, Tommy Hilfiger jeans. Right, right. He's like, Oh, the yeah. Tommy Hilfiger jeans are huge now. And I'm like, Are you serious? So it's Looking like low. which okay, so let's just think about this. Our world's about to really, really, really change, Jared. Right. How do you stay nimble and on your feet with OAC and adjust to these times that are about to come? You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you kinda of look at uh what we've done uh, we, we make changes all the time, right? It's, you know, events every year we make changes, not just for change sake, but we kind of, okay, you know, going back to you know how we started, you, you take a assess where you're at, let's get a strategy how we can change it for the better. And um, so, we're, yeah, we're going to, you know, come back, you know, whenever this, you know, starts, you know, whatever the new normal or America 2.0, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, we'll, we'll figure, you know, wrestling's not going away. So, um you know, we'll figure it out and, um, 
you know, however the events got to take place. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we're nimble enough. You know, we're, we're small enough that we can change, you know, we're not some big, huge you know, organization. We're pretty small. So we're able to make changes on the, you know, pretty quickly. So, um, you know, that, that's all, that's all we've been doing for the last time many years. And you know, that's all life is, man. You, you get variables and you, you adjust to them. And obviously this is a pretty darn big variable and it's going to have variables from the big variable, but, uh, We'll see how, you know, see how it shakes out and, um, you know, what that's going to look like for, you know, OAC or even wrestling and Ohio wrestling and, and all that. So what is the new normal? Do we, I, I, and I, dude, I know that you're not, we don't know everything. That's the thing. Like you yeah. and I are, we're learners. We will keep, I will shut my mouth and listen to what people have to say. Same here. Same here. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't have that answer. I don't think anybody does. Uh, it's just going to be a slow, gradual process of what that's going to be, right? It's going to, it's going to change. It's going to change a lot of things, and you know, it's probably going to change things that we don't know right now. We don't even know right now, right now. So, Jared, what do you uh, think? Mostly. What do you think the biggest thing in youth sports is that it's going to change? Like, what, what, what is, what is, what are youth sports going to look like now? Because you know, we're going to have a scaling back of our economy, and and you know, like twenty six mm-hmm. million unemployed people and it's only going to rise if we stay in quarantine what's it going to look like for you guys and 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 as far as events do events get cut back what do you do there do you know no i don't know at this point um you know i think youth sports across the board you know hopefully it's just a a, a better appreciation of it you know it, when you don't have something right you kind of appreciate it and hopefully you know not just for wrestling but all youth sports you kind of have a you know um you know He's talking to a buddy and it's, you know, yeah, we we're talking how he's saying how nice it is. I'm not running this kid to this event or this practice or this. And it's just kind of nice to sit at home and, you know, let it soak in for a minute. And, uh, you know, hopefully people remember that and kind of appreciate it. Um, you know, what, what they do have instead of, Oh, I'm chasing this next trophy or doing this or trying to push, 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 push. And, and, you know, hopefully that, you know, I don't know, maybe they, you know, just bump, you know, who knows? Maybe they don't. Maybe it just goes back to old, old ways, but it's hard to, hard to say what that is. But hopefully it's an appreciation of, of what we do have and, you know, what, what we have going on, you know, not just wrestling, but all sports. Small businesses. You guys are a small business. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, didn't you say that there's like crazy insurances? I don't know if you saw this. Wimbledon. Wimbledon, the tournament, they got mm-hmm. pandemic insurance. Right. Really? Yeah, hmm. they're gonna end up getting like 144 million dollars. That that's I I didn't see that or hear that. It's pretty no, wild. Wimbledon got. I remember. I just watched this thing. Wimbledon got pandemic insurance. It's a real thing. Wow. You guys got that's like fun. what's you got some type of insurance that's not gonna apply to this. What are people gonna do who bought insurance? Right. Like, what's the likelihood that we're gonna see? Tens of thousands of small businesses closed, Jared. Right. I mean, that's potentially could happen. You know, it's hard to hard to say. The insurance, I don't think they know. I, that, that's the first I heard that. But you know, some people are, oh, it's not being covered. You know, event insurance is not being covered. Some people are saying, you know, the government's going to make them cover it. You know, if they make them cover it, then now your rates for everything else are going to go up. You know, they, that money's going to have to come from somewhere. So you know, I don't know. You know, a lot of small businesses, you know, you know, make clothes, but some, you know, it's you know, things will just change and, you know, you know, it's not like wrestling is going to go away or, you know, your small pizza store is going to go away or small shop. Someone's going to be open and you just got to, you know, those guys, everyone has to figure it out. Um, you know, it, you know, this is, it's going to change, but okay. What, what can we do differently? You know, like going back to, you know, my dad's small business, they, they changed years ago. Here's what we're doing, right? Here's our, you know, competitive advantage. Here's what we're doing, right? And here's, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's it's wild, man. But as far as insurance, I don't know. Insurance isn't my isn't my my world, and how that's going to all shake out. It, I, that's the first I heard Wimbledon's going to get pandemic insurance. Um, but it, that's wild, pretty though. wild. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty. I'm, yeah, it's. It, uh, I'm going to look that up when we get out yeah, there. No, I mean, um, yeah, uh, I could I could show it to you as we're talking. Um, no, no, I believe wild this. Is, this is, yeah. You were in. Um, you were actually in retail. You were like a, uh, you were on route to being like regional manager of like Target, right? Was it was it Target? 
Well, I went back to grad school at Kent State and um, yeah, Target and logistics. So while well, I was in my math, you know, like I said, I can't decide to go back. So, um, so how brutal is that? Yeah, yeah, brutal, man. That that's yeah, I mean, that's already changed. crazy for the most part. And, you know, they're gonna continue to change those. Right, retail is gonna be, you know, a big changer. So okay, Wimbledon. Is gonna get 140, 141 million. I said 144 million, and they were they were paying two wow. million dollars a year in pandemic insurance, and they did it back with mm-hmm. SARS in like 2001. So they saw that back then, huh? So 2001, yeah. 19, they've paid what 38 million. Mm-hmm. Two, 30, yeah. they paid 38 million. They're gonna get 141 million. Wow. So they uh, why why are we paying this? Let's get rid of this pandemic. You know, that's the first thing you cut, right? Right, right. Okay, seventeen years ago, so they've paid thirty four million into the oh, pandemic, and they're gonna get one forty one. So they're they're good for a year. They're good. They can right. actually let this thing go a whole another year. Right. It's in July. Right. They'll we'll we'll be up up, up and running in July of twenty twenty one. Right. Yeah, I mean, right. I we will, we're we're in a position. We'll be, you know, if next year doesn't happen. We're still be all right. So we're yeah. we're uh, but, we're not going anywhere. Jared, what what um, what do you think the biggest thing you want kids to get out of youth sports is? Because you don't just do wrestling. You do you do football. I cover the football yeah, right. championships. You right. do you do uh, cheerleading. You do <laughs> wrestling. What else are you in? Right. Just, just those three. What do you want kids to get out of this? Well, I hope, you know, kids get out of it through the parents and the coaches that, you know, you got to learn to overcome, you know, whatever life throws at you. You know, it's, uh, you know, you've seen that, right? Would you have a, a crazy knee injury in high school? Not crazy, but what, you tore your ACL? Would you tear? I tore everything. I tore everything right. with my PCL. So, you know, you, you know, obviously that you got to learn through that and, um, you know, with this, you kind of, you know, some things are out of your control. You got to learn what you can control. And hopefully these coaches and, and parents are teaching the kid, okay, this is what's happening. This is what we control. Here's what we can do. And just, you know, keep things in perspective because it's, uh, you know, it, you know, we're all in the same boat here, you know, you know, what we can do and can't do. And for the most part, um, so hopefully that's what they get out of this is, you know, okay, let's control what we control. You know, here's what I did right. Here's what I did wrong. Here's what I'm going to gonna do better next time you know you say you have no regrets about going to kent state and wrestling and, and you know you could have gone to the big 10 you had probably offers a bunch of other places um that fork in the road when it come to comes to being a target manager and going and working for a youth sports organization mm-hmm. would you change anything about that no no i learned a lot there and you know i'm doing what i love you know it's you know i i enjoy what i'm doing and getting to the people i get to be around right i mean it stinks though some you know at these events you know when you come run, running into the tournament and give me the bracket give me the brackets or give me this person you know this this information i don't really get to spend you know as much quality time with people at these events sometimes you know um you know you and neiman and gory you know, i could talk to you guys at events but it's not you know always the best quality time but it it, it puts me around people um like you guys, you know, we talk from time to time and, you know, those type, you know, the guy Seikos of the world and, you know, it's, you know, all those types of people that I get to be around, um, you know, makes me appreciate what I'm doing. And obviously I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't, I love what I'm doing. I, I think anybody would if they're, you know, a wrestling fan. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. It's, uh, it, it puts me around great people and it's, it's, it's fun, you know. Is there a better partner than to no, no, he's not. Is there honestly? I want you to think about it. Is there a more right. fair person to deal with in the in the, the wrestling? No, world like I said, said he called. You know, he, he was putting the building up, and he's like, "Hey, what's your you know brother's number? I got to get blinds up." You know, and uh, you know that's how small businesses work, right? You you know, you spend with small businesses, and you know, then, then people remember that, and you know, that, it's kind of how wrestling is, right? I mean, we're all. You're just talking about John Smith. You know how accessible was he? You know when you as a kid. You know another no other sports are you like that. So I mean, you, it's real easy to figure out who who are good people and who aren't. Right, real quick. Well, when, it's like crazy because 
you roll up on him with the wrong college hat, and he could have told me to go kick rocks. He, right. even said, he said it, wrong OSU. But, like, he didn't have to sign my hat. He could have gone, like, go, hey, man, go kick rocks. Like, here's the other crazy thing. Everyone's like, eh. They're always like, hey, can you get me Guy Seiko's information? The guy's always like, Zub, my phone number's on the website. Right, right. It, it literally <laughs> rings into my phone. If people want to talk to me, I'm accessible. And that's right. the crazy thing about him. And it's like, dude, you go there, and I go there, and Charlie Agazzino, Dan, and uh, there's Leah, and then there's uh, uh, Charlie, Dan, Leah, and and Gus Seiko. Gus Seiko's mm. working like a dog every time I go there. It's crazy. Awesome. I'm like, dude, why aren't you out? Like, you got a degree from UVA, and, you, and you're. Box and soap, but I think they like. I but, think they like the grind. You know, you get the degree, but you know they probably love what they do. You know, you you can make all the money in the world doing something you hate, but why? Right, why? Right? Yeah, you're right. And Charlie, Charlie's got a Cornell degree, and right. Charlie Agazzino's a genius. It's crazy though, because a lot of those St. Ed's guys, a lot of those St. Ed's guys, they're all cut from like the same cloth. They're not obviously family. <laughs> What's well, like Joel Greenley told me? He's like on the bike path. In, near Athens, or out by yeah, his house. Right. And Heffernan. he says he sees uh, yeah. Heffernan out. Heffernan, Heffernan yeah. runs 12 miles a day. I see that. I, I, watch it, I, watch, I watch your stuff, Zeb. Yeah, I watch they your like, stuff. But they all like, they yeah. like, well, it's just like Namath. Yeah. Dude, right. Namath's working out in his backyard every day. Namath's doing out, like, push ups and squats and cardio. <laughs> and he's doing, do you realize, like, dude, there's another St. Ed's guy. It's like these, they're maniacs and workers, but. I just don't know if you're going to beat those people at much. I don't know if you're going to beat them at business. Time to beat and it doesn't quit, right? Well, yeah. I mean, and it's like they're fanatically not quitters. Like, they just keep going and going and going and going. It's just like, you remember Mike Tolar. Think about how hard Mike Tolar worked. Tolar, yeah. Well, it's just like Jeremy Orsky. He owns a, he owns a small business. He, uh, right. Uh, collision, right? Collision. Auto right? Auto body, right? And then the brother. Like that and tri- right? Jason's in financial planning, right? Yeah, I mean, they're just like, I don't want to go up against those guys in much. Mm-hmm. I want to be on the no, team. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. Um, what do you got for me? Anything else? No, man. You know, how's uh, you guys doing good? Sarah doing good? Yeah, Sarah works cra- like a crazy person. Yeah. She's uh, calling students. You know, we all have students who have difficulties, whether it's – um. If they don't have internet, and she's trying right. to make sure that kids that don't have access to her online and classes. She's in a good, a great school system, right? Which is, right? Yeah, I mean, it's the best school system. Um, right. So I mean, so they really go above and beyond for their kids, and I think my wife is going. She wants to like mail them physical paper, paper pencil packets if they need it, and that's awesome. And I just, I wish I. I wish I had more teachers like that. I wish I could be a teacher like that. I mean, she's just into it, man. And she's, she's just fully into it. And she spends more time now. You know, like a lot of people, Oh, you're off. My wife's not off. I can tell you that much. I do. I don't have any sessions today, but I do, uh, three half hour sessions Monday through Thursday. And, um, they're zoom sessions. And then I do lectures and put them on my school YouTube and post into the Google Classroom, and then I have quizzes, and then kids are doing current issues articles. So as a teacher, for me, I, I just don't like being not physically in my classroom to where I can like talk to the kids and they can. Right, you're a very and, social person, obviously, yeah. right? So it's a little different. Yeah, so that that's what sucks for me. Where's my wife? What's the biggest social? obstacle with with that with that uh, the Zoom, and what's the biggest obstacle with 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 those those sessions? Um, well, I figured this thing, there's a waiting room you can put people in when they don't put their name in and they don't use their full name. You're gambling when you let somebody in who you don't, if they use a nickname or something like that. So one kid, it didn't have his full name and I never let him into the meeting. And I, the kid was like, why wouldn't you let me in the meeting? And I'm like, you don't, you got to use... And then, like, some right. people would get right. in the meeting. Like, security issues, right? With yeah, Zoom, right? security issues with stuff like that. And But I think for the – I mean, I don't want to end up on Barstool Sports 
as a funny, <laughs> look at what we did in our Zoom meeting today. I'm a savage, or my teacher's a savage. And, right. You know they're doing that the whole time. They're, you know they're, they're Snapchatting, and it's just like to right. the point where you really don't have a lot of control over that, especially when they're 30 miles away, right? I mean, you have no right. control. No control. So I think that's the big thing with that. That's the big challenge there. Um, I don't really care about that. I mean, whatever. You end up on Barstool Sports. You end up on Barstool Sports. It's out of your control. Um, and you kick the kid off and you ban him from the class. And, and now all they're only able to interact through watching videos and emails, which has got to suck for them. Unless they right. just genuinely hate education, which you probably have some of that. You run into that, right? Yeah, sure, right? But, um... The biggest challenge, though, is just not being able to, like, interact with the kids in person. Mm, right? right? They can see. Not... They can, I, I got this damn, I have a damn coffee mug. I have a Hoover damn coffee mug, and I have Hoover damn paperweight. I remember those, those and interviews. I, and I those, tell those, these, like, videos. corny Hoover damn jokes. Yeah. Every Friday, they got to put their quiz. Who was it? You and Cac? Was it you and Cac? Doing that video? Yeah, 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 yeah. Brian Keck and I did a damn video. And then um, what's wild is I bought the damn paperweight from the damn gift shop <laughs> where I took a bunch of damn videos and damn pictures. And if you got any damn questions, I can show you the damn pictures and damn videos. It's corny, but it's like the kids get that, like, you're, you're – you're in or whatever. Them, right? you're, there, you're there for their mm -hmm. entertainment largely and to get right. them engaged in maybe some learning that's not super exciting. Right. I like telling the story about Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr and the duel. I mean, we're doing the um, election of 1800, which ended actually in a tie and the House of Representatives decided it. And Alexander Hamilton and John Adams, they largely influenced the House of Representatives vote on it. We didn't, we're way past that, but um, now we just did election of 1824, which John Adams was third in that election of 1800 because Thomas Jefferson won, Aaron Burr was runner up, and then John Adams was the second president of the United States. He was part of influencing the vote, him and Alexander Hamilton, so that Jefferson won. Burr was runner up. So I want you to think about this. In 1800, Aaron Burr was the vice president. So that would be like now Hillary Clinton being the vice president. Just think about that. Pretty wild. We, we changed it. We, we, you know, we amended the Constitution. It's, I think it's the 12th Amendment. I could be wrong. Yeah, I think it's the 12th Amendment. 11th or 12th. I'd have to look real quick on my – I have a, the app on my phone, the Constitution app. But long story short, the House of Representatives picks the president if someone doesn't hit – either it's a tie – or someone mm -hmm. doesn't hit the threshold of – it's 270 electoral college votes now because there's 538 electoral college votes. But if you do the math there, Jared, mm -hmm. 538 is an even number. Can you have a tie in the presidential election? Correct. Right. And when you do, it's 269 to 269. They don't hit the threshold of 270, so nobody wins anyway. So here's the crazy thing about that, Jared. You can go to a vote – and the person, neither one of those people that tied, you could have a third party that could win because the House of Representatives could elect them. And we've done that <laughs> twice. In, we've done that twice in history. We did it in 1824 as well. Andrew Jackson lost to John Quincy Adams, and his dad John Adams was in that 1800 election, which ended in an actual tie. In um, 1824, it didn't end in a tie. Uh, Nobody hit the threshold. I think it was 130 electoral college votes. I could be wrong there. Now it's 270. But I think Andrew Jackson had the most electoral college votes. He had 99. And he, hit, and he won by 50,000 popular votes, which means nothing we know now. Um, and then John Quincy Adams actually won in the House. And he became so, president. And then they ran it back four years later, and Jackson crushed him. He crushed John Quincy Adams in 1828. So, Jared... You had no interest in anything I just said. Imagine being 13. <laughs> I'm sure you do a good job. But you get my point. Them. Like, you got to engage right, right, him. You got to right. find a way. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're telling right. stories. You're telling yeah. stories about, I mean, dude, 30 plus guys were led through the American West by a 
teen mom who carried her baby. I want you to think about that. Right. 30 rough and 30 plus rough and tumble guys were led by Sacagawea through the American West by a teenager who carried her baby with her. And you got to connect that to think about that's a great story. That's a great that's a great story. And and there's just like things like the greatest coincidence in American history. Like I want to say it was the Shoshone or the whoever it was. They're rolled up on a tribe and they needed horses from them to get through the Bitterroot Mountains and the Rocky Mountains. Well, this tribe had all intentions of just killing them and keeping the their guide. Uh-huh. Killing these 30 plus guys and keeping the guide. The guide was Native American. She had a son, John Baptiste, Sacagawea. And as they're like starting to do the translation, they walk up and the chief who's talking to Lewis and Clark and Charbonneau, which is the husband of Sacagawea, the chief and Sacagawea are like overcome with emotion. So this tribe that's just going to kill them, it's going to kill Lewis and Clark and the 30 guys that are with them. They're going to like keep the woman and her kid. They're like overcome with emotion. Well, 10 years, 15 years earlier, 10 years earlier, Sacagawea was kidnapped in a raid the chief was her brother. The chief was Gross. her brother. So, I mean, it's just like Oliver Hazard Perry. We all know that story. Dude, Oliver Hazard Perry was on a sinking ship. He got on the, the raft. He They paddled through the Battle of Lake Erie, through the cannonballs and ships ramming them. And he went to the USS Niagara and he commanded the rest of the battle and defeated and defeated the British and brought... Block, uh, broke the block, British blockade in the War of 1812. So it's like these are uh, like Americans are we're crazy. It's like the war. Crazy. It's like Orsky's crazy. Mike Toller no is crazy. No is crazy. Guy Seiko is crazy. But these, you know what I mean? Like it's the American spirit, man. Like Oliver Hazard Perry was out of his mind. You know George Washington, largely to a large degree, he was out of his mind. Your dad. To a large degree, the things your dad, he's out of his mind. My dad is out of his mind. Right? Probably at the time, they probably didn't think, right? And in hindsight, they're like, whoa. Well, yeah, it's like, dude, they're doing, and like, we're talking like, our dads just work real hard, right? They they work real hard and they think pretty smart. It's amazing that you you hear stories, I'm sure your dad, like, whoa, how do you do that? Yeah. At the time, think about it, right? Yeah, it's just like, Joe Williamson got stuck in a, oh, he got stuck in a 13,000 foot mountain pass in Colorado. And drove back down the mountain so he could live. That's nuts. I never that That's nuts. Like, dude, if his car goes off the road, he's gonna tumble down the mountain. Did you tell, tell that in your in your interview yeah, video from Yeah, and he went back to a hotel and, and I didn't they, get like, had one they didn't have any beds left and then a rabbit out of a hat and they had a room and but dude, like people do crazy things. Not even like stupid crazy well, they're stupid too. Right? Like taking a teenage girl with you. With a baby to guide you along a dangerous yeah. journey with like grizzly yeah, bears, no option, right? You, yeah, no through option. like large rapids. All right, we got another one here. We yeah. got another oh, one. What's up, dude? This is Thomas. I know the German. What's up, Tommy? What that? He's the German. The German. <laughs> ah, what do you got? The German. What do you have? What do you got? The what do you have? Oh, here? they made their own stress balls. There you go. They made these out of these like like silicone. My mother-in-law sent like some uh, science kit, some nerdy science kit. Okay, we get a couple though. Yeah, you know, like the the subscription things or. We have a mother, and I just have a mother-in-law who's the next scientist. Oh, nice. She sent. I got something. a good mother. I got a good mother-in-law too. I got a really good one. She's awesome. Yeah, I mean, well, we're Jared, lucky, right? Jared, yeah. went on over an hour here, buddy. Um, okay. Do you got anything else for me? Any questions no, for me? Anything you want to ask me? I, I was, you know, not a long story, but, you know, we touched on but the NCAA, what's it going to look like? What's this all going to mean for for wrestling? Short answer, right? I think that a lot of these teams, these mid-major teams, I think it's mm-hmm. going to end up looking like men's gymnastics, unfortunately. Right. I think you're going to see 20 or 25 programs that are going to stick it out. Here's what's going to happen. I think you're going to see in 15 years – and Joel Greenlee said this. He's like, what his college coach told him, we got to innovate. 
That's what's going to happen. How about that? Yeah. If we innovate, right. we'll be okay. If we don't innovate, Kent State, Cleveland State, Edinburgh, Clarion, OU, Northern Illinois, Central Michigan, Campbell. I don't know. You can right. I mean, no, I, right, right. State. They're not going to – Chattanooga. They're not going to have programs. And what it'll yeah. look like, it'll look like men's gymnastics and with 25 teams or 20 teams. And – you know, Ohio State's going to be fine. Iowa's going right. to be fine. Iowa, Penn State's State, going to be right. fine. Right. Um, Michigan. Cornell's probably going to be fine. Michigan's going to be fine. Um, the service academies are probably going to be fine. The traditional Big Ten's going to be fine. The traditional four in Big 12 are going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Iowa State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Mizzou will probably actually be fine because they got SEC football. Lehigh will be fine, right? You know, like we can sit here and name 20, 25 programs. Who's going to be in yeah. question? Right, because Lavar, not a whole factor, right? I mean, it's a lot of factors, but the image and likeness thing, right? From football and basketball, right? that, that's going to be another, right? Yeah. Not good for us, right? Yeah, and the other thing is, you know, it's like Princeton has, if you look at endowments, Harvard and Princeton should never drop wrestling. Should. They should right. never drop wrestling because their endowments are just disgusting. Mm -hmm. When you look at endowments, those the Ivies have the biggest endowments. Mm -hmm. Right. This is how it is. Columbia mm -hmm. should never drop wrestling. But I think it comes down to it that then at that point, I don't know if it's a money thing, it becomes a political thing. We'll see, man, because those are, the endowments, they have billion-dollar endowments, but a lot of your endowments are obviously variable variable upon the, the market, right? Well, and they're probably like designated to where they're going. I'm yeah. sure, you know, if you're donating the money, it's, all right, this is designated for this program or this, you know, institution, uh, part of the institution. Uh, you know, uh, I, I doubt any of that's for wrestling, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. So it's earmarked for... Physics or what? Right? I mean, yeah. uh, or the school. But, but, but the, the the, school what happens when they start paying image and likeness? Right? That money is going to come from somewhere, right? Yeah, and so then and then Penn. Penn should never drop. But you know, what I mean, hey, we'll see. Once again, Penn has a huge endowment. Um, yeah, Jared, I, th I think that there has to be some innovation on our part. We can't rely like we have a donor, Bill Drypolcher. Um, he owned the Zephyr Realty Company in San Francisco Bay Area. Right. I don't think we can expect, you know, I had a half hour conversation with him yesterday. I don't think we can expect Bill Drypolcher to stroke a $25 million check to Kent State wrestling. And then if Bill Drypolcher, he passes away, you know, he's in his 70s. And he, he was an Army Ranger in Vietnam. And then Kent State moves the goalpost and takes his money. Well, you know what? We're actually going to build a new science building here. We're going to. The Liquid yeah. Crystal Institute needs this, or you know what I mean? You, you yeah. just, it's just, yeah, it makes me sick that. Sorry, I didn't mean to bum me out. To no, start your day. Just, and I think you're gonna have some schools that are just gonna have to move the club. Right. It's. I mean, that's, you don't think I'm constantly thinking about it? You don't think it's kind of. No, I know you are. No, like, and uh, you know, you're hearing all kinds. Of, like you said, you're a learner, so you're you're talking to all these people, and you kind of. I'm just curious, you know. My thing is, though, I'm not like, you know, it's like, who I, I like Willie, but I'm not a scoop guy. I'm not a like. No, no, no. People no, tell that's me not your stuff, no. and I'm under the impression that they told me that in confidence. Like, everything I try and keep off the record, man. Right. Even when people are like, oh, hey, I want to, like, somebody wanted to commit through me. They're like, hey, we want to announce my commitment that's, through you. That's and not like, thing. I said, dude, that's just. Flow Wrestling right. does that, or, 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 or the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, track Wrestling does that. I, that's just not me. I'm, I'm not your best route. I'm flattered that you think uh, that you feel that way about me, but I'm, I'm not a news breaker. I'm not a, that doesn't matter to me. I don't care. That's not like what, uh, you know, like someone, some person on Instagram is like, dude, you, you put all these awesome videos on here and they're only getting hundreds of views. I don't care. Right. Well, tell me to shut up when I tell you ideas. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
So no, I'm, just tell me to shut up. Though, when I, when guy, I kept this, well, no, your ideas are great. Like putting this into an audio podcast, that's the way to do it. You know, and then it doesn't, it doesn't motivate you, but no, you're doing, you know, what I was thinking though, maybe it's better that way. Cause then it's, it's an uninterrupted, right? Well, yeah. And then it, when you stuff, watch it and you kind of, yeah. When stuff becomes about money and then it changes things. And if you got a gun to your head about views, mm. views or listens or accesses or shares or likes or is that can be poison to you. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Well, then the, whoever's saying, well, it's only getting hundred views. Those are not, they're probably only watching it on YouTube. They're not seeing it on your yeah, yeah your your Facebook page or you know Ohio's Facebook page. You know, there's it's really more than that. You know? I'd like to dig the conversation I had up with this person. I was like, well, that's I don't think that's why I do it. Yeah, right. Or I was right. like, cool, man. Or I don't care. Or something along those lines. But I don't even know who it was. But and it's not like a dig on whoever the person. I don't even know who it was because it was just like, wow, you're you're why are you doing this stuff if it's not getting watched or. It's really good content and people, more are people watching should it. be watching. And they're probably right, but like uh, people just, are watching. I just don't care. That's not why I did it. You know? So all right. Oh. All right. I'm gonna go in uh, here. All right, tell tell Sarah hello. I will. And um, dude, thanks for the time. Thanks for the time. No, this this you. um you'll be able to go and watch the live video immediately from my phone right here. Okay. And then um I'll cut this and we'll talk a little bit off camera, right? All right. All right. So we end the live broadcast.